Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we have some sad news. I'm sure many of you already know that the mangaka behind Berserk has died uh, at age 54, far too young mm -hmm. uh, to pass away. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And really, I think what we're going to talk about more in this video is just how hard manga creators work in comparison to their Western counterparts and how I guess you could argue for and against whether that or not that's good um, because in Japan, you know, they do put out more content. Um, they they do tend to do better financially, a lot of these creators, but uh, many of them have health issues and uh, unfortunately pass away at a young age due to overwork. Mm -hmm. uh, compare it to freelancers here in the States and sometimes it's like pulling teeth to get them to do anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We, we have hired before, so we're speaking from experience. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about that before we get into it. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 190,000 subs. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for the support. We're on our way to 200,000. I'm not sure what we're gonna do at 200,000. I don't know, we gotta think of something cool. Quit. No! Take the world's longest vacation. No, we're not doing that. Yeah, we should. Uh, I don't know. We gotta do something. We did something for 100,000. We'll figure it out. I don't know. We gotta do something. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm sure you guys have heard the news. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce his name. Kentaro uh, Miura, creator of best selling manga Berserk, dies at age 54. Uh, very, very sad news. They had it in. The Guardian, uh, the manga is never going to finish, obviously, because no. uh, he was so tied to it. The Japanese artist was best known for Berserk, which he wrote and drew. It launched in 1989 Gosh. and has been running ever since. I know it's a very long running series. Set in a world inspired by medieval Europe, it follows the story of mercenary guts, etc., etc. Uh, his character designs were hugely influential on other comics and games, including Dynasty Warriors, Final Fantasy, and Dark Souls. On Thursday, thousands of fans gathered online to pay tribute to him, including a virtual memorial in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, very, very sad. So even, uh, well, here we have the Dark Horse comics editor, Chris Warner, described Berserk as a harrowing dark fantasy of monumental depth, complexity, and audacity. Uh, you know, so they had a little bit of a, a, a eulogy for him. Even the Mary Sue. Uh, the Mary Sue did something talking about it, but pretty much everybody's talking about it because it is it is uh, shocking and sad. And um, this is the original tweet. And yeah, uh, it said he's been writing manga since age 10, publishing stories for his classmates. It sounds familiar. Yeah, it does. Uh, Some people are, I guess, born to do it. Like you used to do, you used to sell little comic books in kindergarten for kids' lunch money. Oh, I did. I did. Yeah, kindergarten, <laughs> I did. I had, a, I had a comic about a character. I think his name was Glucky. He was like a, my Gumby OC. Oh, God. But he was like a cross between Gumby and the Care Bear. Uh, <laughs> but was he white? Uh, no, he was actually Because I was pink. like, if he was, and then he had to appropriate other colors. I think he was pink. <laughs> he didn't have any legs. He just had like giant sneakers. Very 80s. He was a very 80s character. Sounds like a very 80s character. But I used to sell, yeah, I used to it's sell. Not like the Chicken McNugget Kids. Like, you would base it on that It was like something. a puppet looking thing. Yeah, I, I don't even, I don't even know if I have, I, I know I've got a box full of drawings that my grandparents gave to me from when I was little. I don't know if they kept any of those, but I used to, yeah, I used to actually hand draw comic books. How many how copies did you have to make? Well, I, everyone was unique. It was kind of like an NFT. Oh. So for a quarter, you So get, you're ahead of the curve. You can have a, an original piece of me for I'm a sure quarter. there's none left. And, and if there was, it was probably worth a dollar nothing, now. Nothing. It's worth absolutely Well, you nothing. would pay. You'd pay. I'd pay a hundred bucks for one. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of curious now. I should Inflation. like shake down all my classmates. And then, of course, you know, we had super fruits. Oh, I forgot about super fruits. I was thinking of super fruits. Oh, really? Yeah. I wasn't thinking about that. But yes, yes. But he wasn't selling them. No, Squid King had his own super fruits. See, that's again. He's gonna kill you for this. That's the uh, the difference between us. I was I was making stuff, and so I had a lemonade stand. I used to make stickers that didn't stick because I didn't have any way to make paper cut out sticky. So I'd roll up a ball of tape on the back of them and I'd put them in a, a pack and try to sell them to kids. Did they buy them? Yes. Because <laughs> I was a hell of a salesman. And you didn't get in trouble for this. No, it was the 80s. We were all about capitalism. Well, I can't tell you then. one, even earlier than that, my mom was student teaching and all of a sudden she starts getting these phone calls on her phone from these kids and they're asking for her. And here it turned out one of the kids, who actually my parents know to this day, um, sold her uh, phone number 
to the other kids in the class because they, they, he just got the number and sold it around and they bought it and they're calling her on the phone. <laughs> I guess I guess she's a teacher's aide then. She's a teacher's <sighs> aide. It was a teacher's aide thing when she. So this is back like in in the in the seventies. See, kids were a lot more enterprising back then. Yeah, I used to make really, really shitty brownies and try to sell them out, out front in my house, like a bake sale. Now you need permits for that. Now you See, need no, permits. Maybe it's not that kids aren't as enterprising now. Maybe it's just that they can't get away with it because you need permits for everything and taxes and everything else. So they just can't They can't do it like they used to. Plus, their parents just hand them money so they don't have to watch them. Yeah. I didn't. So. See, I didn't get handed my. I had to. I worked my. I ass didn't off. either. I had to earn stuff. I, I did. Like my grandfather, he had a he had a garage, uh, you know, auto body shop, and he had me sanding cars. Five dollars a car. Sanding. God, so screwed. Sanding the car by hand with a piece of sandpaper, like multiple pieces of sandpaper, because it had to be. You had to, you know, use oh, the yeah, finer you had to go sand. Down, yeah. yeah. So you start with the coarser sandpaper, and, and then your you work hands your way are down. a mess. Anyway. Yeah, they were. Back to what the point is. Uh, the we point can't is. take any side detours, and people get mad about well, it. Well, no, that's why. That's why our our show is is so entertaining. Um, <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, they say his artistic drive followed him for the rest of his life, causing him to grow into the amazing artist who was responsible for Berserk. Well, let's just say, I think some people are just born to draw, and they, that's all they do. They had uh, 40 volumes of Berserk, 35 million copies sold worldwide. Oh. 35 million. Um, and it's going to go unfinished, you know. Um, so, uh, look, I actually I, I give the Mary Sue props for having a nice, respectful, you know. Now you get to the comments and people are like, people are like, it was problematic. It's a problematic favorite. Uh, it's dark and violent. It's problematic. It's like, yeah, because, you know. It wasn't for you, I guess. It's not for you. Um, but anyway, here's here's what happened. Supposedly he died from an aortic dissection. Now we're going to get all medical okay. on you. And uh, again, you know, age 54, that's, that's too young. But yeah. uh, it just kind of happened. And a lot of times they said it comes from uh, high blood pressure, um, you know, aortic valve defect maybe. Um, they said that, uh, you know, it could be smoking. I don't know if he smoked or not. But blood pressure, probably not being in the best of shape because a lot of these manga artists spend many, many hours sitting. Well, traumatic injury to your chest or like a car accident can cause it too. I mean, I'm not, that's yeah. not what happened here. But yeah, they, these poor guys, you know, what's something we run into? We have to, we're about to join the gym locally because, again, because we sit all the time. Because between doing the videos and the, the, the blogs, we spend a lot of time sitting, and it cannot be good for us. And we need to get to get working out. Well, they have uh, they have desks now for, and I, I know that um, a lot of office workers are using them. Actually, the standing desks. Yeah, I was debating about getting one actually. Yeah, human beings are not meant to sit for eight All to ten hours a day. Yeah. Now, another detour. One of the very first office jobs I had, I worked in a newspaper, and uh, my boss Bucky. Not Bucky. Not the Barnes. good kind of Bucky. Not the hot kind of Bucky. He was he was a World War II vet though. Uh, he was. Well, that's good. well. Maybe it was the wrong Bucky. I, the wrong Bucky. I don't know. But um, he was a hard ass, and he was like, "You worked at the newspaper. You were expected to be in your chair, save for your two ten-minute pee breaks and your lunch break. You were in your seat working." And he literally spent his entire shift walking up and down the composing. Well, he department. got to be in good shape. Yeah, he got to walk all over the place. Up and down the aisles of the composing department, making sure everybody was working. Well, shouldn't he have been making sure things were done right and then making sure that he was editing and doing his job? He actually wasn't terribly good at his job. He was just oh. very good at intimidating everybody else into doing their jobs. Well, Bucky is rather intimidating. Yeah, I don't think he's alive anymore. He probably. I is. doubt that. Uh, it's been a while. Anyway, um, yeah. So here's here's what we really want to talk about here, and this is this is very sad, and I don't know if. He passed away due to overwork. If I had to guess, um, I would say that that probably factored into it. Because if you've ever followed Oda, the creator of One Piece, it's been talked about a lot that he works. I mean, he doesn't just work his ass off. He works his legs off. He works mm -hmm. his feet off. He works his arms off. Uh, he's worked his life away. He's, he's wound up in the hospital multiple times due to stress and overwork. Now, this guy's worth hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars. So you could wrap it up. 
He could wrap it up. Yeah, he could. Uh, he could, you know, they, they could do a demon slayer and just be like, this is it. This is the beginning, middle, end of the story. I'm going to take a break and come back with another one. Just that image. I'm just, Twitter's reading right now. Just all the problematic parts of this image, but continue. Somebody call four kids. Fix it. Um, yeah. So, you know, the guy's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He could job it out. You know, uh, and I know that a lot of uh, successful manga artists do. Uh, I believe uh, Toriyama does. He has Bird Studio, and I think he jobs most of the work out now because he's getting up there. Um, I I would, but he's I guess such a control freak that he has to make sure that he's got uh, complete control over it. But he has been in the hospital multiple times, multiple times because of his work schedule, and we're going to talk about that. What is expected? in Japan versus what's expected here in the US. Um, they talk about being a, a living nightmare to be a manga artist, that you're signing up for voluntary enslavement. Mm -hmm, I believe it. I yeah. know much work goes into this stuff, so it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, I mean, you go to Oda's schedule, and this is his schedule right here. Yeah, we talked about this before. It's just yeah. nuts. And, and this is, I mean, he's, I think, in a different weight class than a lot of manga artists, but it is... You basically live to draw your comics, uh, and it is do or die over there. If your comic doesn't take off, if it doesn't sell, you're done, and that might be your entire career. Like th this is all you plan to do with your life is make this comic and make it big doing this comic, and uh, to the exclusion of like everything else. Like now, he does book in a lot of time for sleep. I mean, not like a lot, but like he's got, you know, it looks like there's two hours here, but that's coming from Sunday when he did several here. So, I mean, he's sleeping, but I love there's three blo blocks of free time. I cannot stress to you how much, tr how much truth to that there is. Um, we do, like for us, for example, we do um, all these things and we don't know what free time means. <laughs> We don't, we don't, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, we've been having this discussion more and more often about just the, the, the number of hours between YouTube and the blogs and the comics and the other stuff we're trying to get started, like is seven days a week, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not telling people to do this, but this guy is at the top of his game, you know, and he probably, for him, he probably wants to stay at the top of his game, which is why he's burning the candle at both ends. But he's probably going to wind up, unfortunately, like the creator of Berserk one of these days and not come out of the hospital. Oh, yeah, well, probably. And I'm just looking at this and I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't. I mean, is the dude married or something? Because well, I, mean, I can't imagine that this would go well. Uh, yeah. Well, I he had daughters. Yeah. He has a daughter. So at some point he had enough time to make a daughter and he sees her one day a week. Uh, so I don't know if he's married or not, but um, I'm sure somebody does. But yeah, he uh, he does he does uh, make some time. <laughs> uh, he sleeps in his own studio without taking a shower. Ew. But he does hang he out. Gets with it his done daughter. though. See, that's what people don't understand. And we run into this all the time with these young creators. They want to do they want to do all these things, and they're going to be the next big whatever. But they don't want to put the, the work in. And we see this over and over and over again. And it's really frustrating to people who've done the work, who put the hours in, to watch these people that just get get handed something because they know somebody or because of the right checkbox or whatever. <laughs> and they haven't actually... And then, then, then there's culture shock for them because, wait, I'm expected to work now? Yeah. Uh, you know, this is happening in American comics at a, a shocking rate. It used to be even back in the day, you know, Jack Kirby was penciling how many books a month. And he wasn't getting paid very well doing it. But, you know... It takes so many hours to actually get really good at something, to master something. We've got people now getting book deals, getting agents that have never actually drawn an entire graphic novel before. Mm -hmm. In fact, you just found something yesterday that uh, somebody is supposedly going to have the book pitched. And it's like, we know this person's never actually done. They just do their own thing when they can. And, when and, they can. And it makes me mad, though, because we've actually hired freelancers a couple of times because thought we'll get some help we need help and this is back when um neon was working a full-time job he'd come home and he'd work uh from he'd come home see the kids for a couple hours at that and then work until two in the morning to get up again at like really early in the morning to go back to work so we've we've personally lived this okay and we had little kids at the time and we hired some help we thought and what happened in both cases they're both from the same school i want to point out and it's and it's uh um, SCAD, 
Mm. Which, you know, no offense, anybody's gone to SCAD, but I have totally would not hire people from SCAD ever again. Because both times we've had people from SCAD and both times there has been a huge sense of entitlement. We had people that had deadlines. Oh, yes, I can, we told up front what we needed. Yes, yes, that's not a problem. We can do that. Um, and then they proceeded to not do things because well, my head hurts today. Or, you know what? I wanted to go do fan art of, of Ninja Turtles. And I didn't feel like doing the work for you that I had told you I would do by a certain time. Yeah, we had this happen multiple, multiple occasions. And there are a lot of people who they want to make it in comics, but they don't seem to understand like the amount of work that goes into it. They just want to be handed it. Yeah. And, you know, when we did the webcomic, when we did Shadow Binders as a webcomic, it was that was actually in addition to a full time day job mm-hmm. because the webcomic didn't pay very much. Mm. So, you know, had to keep the money rolling in and draw the comic. So what suffered was was sleep. I usually would I would go downstairs with my daughter, spend time with my daughter uh, and we would go downstairs until probably two o'clock in the morning, get up at six or seven in the morning to go to work. And, and that's how the stuff got done. She was in the age where she didn't want to go to bed. Yeah. Um, and, it, oh, yeah. and I and I was in there the whole time, too. It wasn't just like, you know. Oh, no, I mean, I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying and, that. And I'm I was saying. working. Um, I was working and doing all the stuff at home. And, you know, I would write the stories. I yeah. promote. I do social media. I do everything else. And I had to take care of two kids. Homework, all that stuff. Um, so it, it's, it's not easy. And a lot of times people are just by themselves. Like, we were lucky enough to have two of us. Um, and I helped color and do things like that. So we, we had two of us. So it was a bit easier in that regard. But you see all these people come out and they're just like, okay, I got my degree. I, it's all going to be handed to me now. Or, you know, I am me. So give me the gig. And the, the one person even went and used uh, Neon's name because we found out later because uh, Neon had been doing stuff for a company they wanted to work at and used his name to get themselves a gig working there. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then didn't, wouldn't, do, wouldn't do the work for us. Oh, my God. We would hire freelance colorists and they would like and we talk because, look, the whole purpose of hiring freelancers in our case was like, you know, I'd rather pay the money to have that time back with my family, you know, and we pay these people or we were going to pay these people and they would just like disappear for days. I'm like, do, do you understand? We we put a couple of pages out a week. We're hiring it like we need like I can give you a couple days turnaround. Or you tell me what the turnaround is, but you can't just like take the work and then disappear. Oh, and the one wouldn't release the pages until the she got she got paid. She wanted paid per page. Like I was that was really scratching my head because the same person went to work for one of the publishers I worked for, and I had to chase them for four months to get paid. And and I know they didn't pay probably as well as we did. No, we paid more. We and paid more. and yeah. So anyway, my point is, you know what you're getting into. Um, if you really want to make it go, and especially if you get popular, it's if you get what you want, you're going to have to work more. Yeah, because there's always going to be somebody nipping at your heels. That's why they would say, you know, too, with, uh, you know, with comics, um, as it is kind of a young person's game, because I think when you're younger and you don't have family responsibilities, you don't own a home, uh, you know, you can take a chance and it's basically just you that it affects, you know. Right. A lot of people, like their spouse works. Yeah. Oh, partner. yeah. That's a whole nother. Um, yeah. You know, their partner does the work, goes to work, and has a good job as a doctor. I know one person who who was, you know, husband was paying for her to sit there and break into comics, um, or they have a nurse or a teacher or something like that. They're getting paid well so that they can just you know do comics all day. So when they're like full time, it doesn't necessarily mean they're full time. Um, we learned that a long time ago. My point is, you know, when you do this kind of job. You're going to be run ragged. It, mm-hmm. it goes to the territory because you have to bust ass to get there. And then after you get there, you have to work even harder to stay there. So you have to remember this going into it. And either you're going to have to have help or you're going to have to make that decision. Of, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. Um, nobody owes you anything. No one's going to hand it to you because you're you. You have to earn it. For most people, uh, I think Hollywood's learning when people don't earn it that it bites them in the ass. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing people being put in charge of multi-million dollar animated series like right out of college. You know, like the only other experience they've had is like maybe doing their own thing on Tumblr. Tumblr, or usually Tumblr. Yeah, it's like that is a miles away from from being able to. Then they're like, oh, my God, this. this is hard. And it's like, no shit. And then they start bitching on Twitter. or They start bitching about like, I wish I didn't have to work retail. Like you, you actually think this is easier. It's harder. And you got a lot of people like you. You screw up in this. It's like your, your career's over. Mm-hmm. Like if they think that you're 
a screw up or you cost them millions of dollars or whatever, um, there's 40 other people waiting to take your place or you're just not the flavor of the month anymore. You know, you but, might have got in because you were the in America, yeah, not true. in Japan, but in no, America. America, Japan, Japan, in Japan, it, you have to you have to prove it and you have to you have to earn it. Yeah. Um, Japan is very, very brutal. Now, this actually the uh, I thought this was Oda's because they had embedded into the article here, but it's actually another another. Oh, is it? Um, another manga artist, um, which they say in the fine print here. Um, this is for the yeah, Nura Rise of the Yokai Clan, Shibashi Hiroshi. Oh, okay, that makes more sense because like he's more than three hours sleep. Okay, I yeah, got his it. is scattered. Oda, um, Oda says some days he sleeps eight hours. No, that's the guy in the chart. Okay, but yeah, Oda's all over the place. Um, everybody's talked about how. How hard he works. This is uh, the Naruto creator. Works nineteen hours a day, six to nine sleeps, nine to nine to thirteen o'clock. Then we go on military time. Works thirteen to fourteen lunch, fourteen to twenty three work, twenty three to twenty four dinner and bath, twenty four to thirty work. Pretty much. I mean, this is crazy. Um, you could get ill from overworking, and this could have possibly maybe been. You know, they haven't well, said for it's sure. It's happened before. It has. I mean, this is a thing in Japan. You know, this is everybody talks about the Japanese work ethic, which I agree. It's 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 something we need more of, I think, here in the States. But, you know, too much of a good thing. And and you've got a lot of I mean, you've got kids. And it's really hard when you're a creator, too. And everybody's like, we want more. They're demanding. They're getting rude with you. We had that happen. Where's our free? We aren't getting our free. Why are even if they want to buy some? Why is our book late? Why aren't we getting it now? It's like well, because people like to live, have a life and have a little bit of downtime. You get tired. Like this one person had a lumbar compression fracture from bending over, working too much on Card yeah. Captor Sakura. I'm like, yeah, this is a North Star creator. He's blind in one eye. Um, okay, so that's that's kind of a thing too. Um, I don't know if it if it's related to squinting over a desk but uh, I, you know, I used to color Don Rosa's work and Don Rosa had detached retinas and I think it could have maybe possibly been from hunching over his desk because his work is so intricate and he has so many panels you know per page and so he's really squinting on the little details and stuff like that and you do that for 20 years day yeah, in, now day you out. can you can enlarge it and work but yeah, back work then you and, couldn't yeah. so I mean I don't know there's just a lot of things and yeah. then the pay is not great. Yes, yes. The other day, yes. Yeah, because even, yeah, if you earn uh, $100 a page, uh, you draw 32 pages a month, that's $3,200 before taxes in Japan. Good luck living in Tokyo. Hey, well, you know what? Uh, but that's like it is here, too, with comics. Yeah. You know, pages often don't pay very well, the page rate, and they want it done. And you're like, you know, the thing about these comic people, um, the writers can write like a whole bunch of titles in the time it takes an artist to do the same the pages for one book yeah so they get to go out and hop from title 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 and get paid more and the meanwhile the artist is on one one stinking book and i think that this is why we've seen a shift in the last 10 to 15 years in comics where the writers have become sort of the the superstars it used to be that the artists were the superstars and oh by the way this book is written by so-and-so but it was always like everybody knew todd mcfarlane and jim lee and and now the writers have and i think it's because they can do more and i think they also have the time to go promote themselves mm -hmm. more or go hire a pr firm or something you don't see artists doing that very often unless they're like a co-creator or something um so it is i mean it's it's kind of and people don't understand this is how it is in the animation industry too that you might have a showrunner here in the u.s but they they send the work overseas and you've got people working these ridiculous hours for mm -hmm. ridiculous pay and it's like you know i could write a, a page and the time it took me to explain the page out and i could probably write a whole book with this i mean like well part of a book with this page and it would take me a couple hours maybe after i went through it a couple times and you know and it would take like neon you know hours to yeah. draw it i mean ours used to be like what 12 hours 15 hours a page um for shadow buyers uh yeah i mean i got to you got more simple you simplify stuff more towards it. the end of, end of the last book but. yeah i got to the point where it's like i cannot put all the shading and all the whatever and i, I did simplify things that's why webtoons you see that they're talking more more close-ups more more talking, talking heads, panels yeah. or just like this word balloons because they're trying to get them out once a week and it's and it's a lot yeah and they said yeah like uh oda's schedule starts at five and ends at 2 a.m uh, finishes are only necessary during busy times of the year. Uh, surely you'd have long holidays to make up for all those intense stretches of work. No, 
Uh, he doesn't. This is a guy who's got two hundred million dollars and no time to spend it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's that's what's insane. Like, and we're nowhere near that, and I'm tired a lot. Yeah, it's. I mean, burnout's a real thing, and it's the same with YouTubers too. I know, like uh, PewDiePie had to take time off. I think Jack Septicai took time off because, especially uh, you know, gaming YouTubers. And if that's your living and the way that the algorithm is set up in YouTube, you basically have to work around the clock. You know, mm-hmm. you got to constantly have new content and it does become a grind. I mean, it does. I mean, and they said, yeah, vacations will cost you sorely. Um, this is uh, the creator of Bleach said he's faced with that whenever he manages to sneak away. He said, I heard you have to draw 19 pages every week and that you drew ahead so you could take a break to come to San Diego Comic Con, which is more work. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you done any drawing since you've been here? I worked really hard so I could take the time to come here. So, no, I haven't worked on any drawings since I've been here. Big smile. Like, thank God. We do that, too. We go when we go to Disney. Yeah. When we go down and do Disney videos and then work on our Disney end of, of things. We have to bank, either bank videos ahead. But since ours is more news-related and time-sensitive, we literally do the parks all day, come back to the hotel room at night, and have to make videos to put them up. And if we don't, we take a huge hit. So we have to do it. Yeah. It's um, like, it's, you know, and just letting people know, like, let people want to do stuff like these comics or things. I'm not discouraging you. I'm like, for all, by all means, go make what you want to make. Because, I mean, I love to see more and more great news stories. I just want to make sure people understand that if you get your wish and you get to be big or you get what you want, with that comes more work. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing that I think, you know, the American comic book industry, a lot of people who want to break in a lot of people who have just recently broken in. They don't understand it. And I think we're, we're kind of seeing that in the results, too, of the books being put out, you know. And because uh, you look at, you compare how comics were, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And those people back then were making ridiculous money. So it was worth, you know, putting the, the time in. But now it's like they're not paying very much. So it's like you get what you pay for. Mm-hmm. You know, even working as an assistant, you're going to work more. Uh, you can't afford assistance to pick up the slack. You know? Yeah, I've been there. And if you do pay for it, they don't even do their job half the time. Yeah. Um, like this guy, uh, oh, Mazinger. Okay, so Mazinger Z, the artist I go and the guy, hired a special assistant just to draw military vehicles. But you, you can afford it. You know, they don't have the money or time to do so. That, so they get stressed out over deadlines. I know there are people that just draw buildings, just draw, mm-hmm. you know. And it's the same with the American comic book industry, Western comics. You've got inkers, uh, colorists, letterers, you know, it, it does take a production team. Or you can do it all yourself and keep all the not money you're going to make. Yep. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. And then there's this. This is what we're... Yeah, our kids complain all the time. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're, you're basically, you live to work and work to live. Unfortunately, we have a computer, suck it in computer. <laughs> this is an old article. This is an old article. This has to be an old article because this is oh, yeah, not, that's true. not true. This is, this <laughs> so, is like, like, this is an old article. This is from two years ago. Yeah, this that's old because that, 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 now it's on the, the it's, it's on the oh, upswing. 2016. Yeah. It's, it's on the upswing not. so much, it's ridiculous. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's actually creating more problems because now there's so much demand, people can't keep up. So, yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, very sad news. Um, you know, it is kind of a gilded cage. It's, I think we're gonna we're gonna hear about more manga creators, uh, unfortunately, passing away before their time. So, uh, I hope you appreciate the work they put out because it literally could be their their blood, sweat, tears, life, everything poured into it. Gonna wrap it up. Yep. Okay. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.